What's up everyone? Matt Miller, the artist here. In this video, I'm going to tell you the story of how I became an artist. Um, I don't do a lot of videos and share a lot of personal stuff on the internet, but I might be doing a little bit more of that. I'm going to start off with this little video. Uh, might give you a little idea of who I am, what I'm about, and uh, what really got me started uh, doing all this painting I've been doing for like seven years almost. So the story of how I became an artist is, uh, in, in a nutshell, I was self-medicating with art therapy, and then I got addicted to painting. Now, that's kind of a tongue-in-cheek way of explaining things, but it's actually pretty true. So uh, seven years ago, I'll say again, <laughs> I was going through a very tough time, and fortunately, uh, prior uh, around this time, I also took a drawing class. It was meant to be recreational for fun to kind of pick up just a new hobby. I, I definitely did a lot of art as a kid. I drew a lot. I even took some, uh, some art class in high school and painted a little bit back then. But I think probably 10 years or so went by before I really did anything artistic. So um, I wanted to get back into it. So I took this drawing class and what I realized when I was in there, it was just a Saturday morning for a couple hours, you go in and draw naked ladies. Pretty cool, huh? And what I realized when I was in there drawing, I would just get in the zone. <clears throat> it was very calm, focused, and peaceful. And I uh, just really enjoyed it. And that gave me a little clue because this was a tough time when I was very stressed out. Things weren't really going great in my life. But going to this drawing class and doing this particular activity of drawing uh, really did something in my mind, it put me in a really nice place. And so the lesson for me was, OK, maybe I need to do more of this stuff, uh, make it a part of my life. And um, so I did. I started drawing and, and painting almost every day. And, you know, like I said, it was a very tough time. It actually got even tougher. Um, I was couldn't sleep. I wasn't really working. I didn't have a lot of money. I was living in my parents' house for a whole winter uh, at age 31. Not good. Um, but it just so happened that some of my old art supplies were in my parents' basement. And I got about and started painting my ass off. And looking back, I don't know how well I would have coped with that period of time if I didn't have this nice activity of painting. And there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, like I kind of explained, it was a, a mental escape from all the stressors of the world and all the things that weren't going right in my life. I could paint and it would, uh, all that stuff would disappear and I could just kind of occupy a mentality of peace and focus and um, just to really enjoy the experience of being alive because sometimes it's not that enjoyable. You know, that's part of the human condition, right? Another reason was I wasn't that bad at it and I would notice myself getting better. So there was this, uh, this new sense of hope, these new goals I was setting for myself. I mean, it was really early on that I actually just decided October 10th, 2015, that's the date that I wrote it down that I'm going to be a professional artist. I, I committed for like the next year that I was going to do it all the time and just push and push and, and go for it. I thought I had, I thought I had what it take. I mean, looking back, my stuff wasn't that good. It's, I guess I'm glad that I have kind of an inflated sense of ego about how good I am or else I'm, I would not have um, set those goals and, and went for it as hard as I did. So anyways, I did get through that tough time. I'm here. <clears throat> and I, I have a smile on my face right now. Um, but I did get through that tough time. And then things got really interesting because I kind of pulled myself out of the hole that I had partially dug for myself. Let's not, let's not uh, kid ourselves here. Pulled myself out of that hole and then I moved to Denver, Colorado. I didn't really know anybody. I didn't really have a lot of money, but I did have a job lined up out there, which is pretty good. And um, I went out one night to a, to a live music venue and there were all these people over in the, over in the corner 
at this low it's like a local small like hippie venue kind of thing jam bands edm shows kind of stuff there's all these artists in the corner painting like four or five six of them over there i'm like oh they're just doing they're just working on their paintings and it was cool it was just cool to watch there's a music going on people are hanging out and then there's artists just over there painting their things and kind of dancing a little bit while they're doing it. i was like that is so cool so I, I i talked to a couple of them and then i figured out how i could get in on it you know so i got invited to come out and do it and like a follow, it was like a Monday night kind of deal. Local, local music, local artists would hang out, and I just loved it. It was, uh, it was, it was unbelievable because it was so high pressure. You know, there's people around, and it's a short period of time. And I was under the impression now this is what all live artists were doing back then. A lot of people would just kind of take a painting that they've been working on, bring it to the venue, and just kind of work on it some more. And people could watch and talk to you, and it's kind of cool. I thought that I had to put on a show. And so I went out and I, I went to Michael's and I bought this like massive, like 30 by 40 canvas. And I showed up with a blank and I, it was Einstein's birthday that day. So I did a port, a big, massive portrait of Einstein and people loved it. And uh, it was so fun. It, uh, but it was high pressure. Like I just said, high pressure. People are watching. It's only a few hours. You know, I got a few hours to do a massive portrait. And this was like, I'd been painting for, four or five months at this time. I wasn't even that good. A lot of the paintings that I would start would just end up looking really crappy. And so here I am, I'm going to go out in public and do the biggest painting I've ever done in my life in just a couple hours. And, but for some reason it turned out pretty cool. People loved it and they invited me back and I would go back like every Monday to the same like recurring event. They put me on stage. And, uh, and then I realized that you could actually make a living doing that. There are people who are live painters um, at, at weddings and sports events and all kinds of stuff. So that's kind of what I've been uh, pushing ever since. But that is what made art almost like a performance sport for me because of uh, you have to be kind of like on your A game when you're doing that. I mean, if I'm here, I'm in my studio right now. I'll tell you what, I, can, I can't focus in here. I, I procrastinate. I don't want to be in here a lot of the times. You know, I always appreciate it when people pay me money to do a painting for them, but I struggle to get myself to do it because it's, I'm just here in my studio. Um, but if, but if you tell me, Hey, we're going to go out to a bar and you're going to have to paint a picture of the band that plays and you have an hour to do it. Oh, sign me up for that. Unbelievable. And then I, I just go, my brain just like, there's some, maybe there's a screw loose or something in my brain. Cause I used to play, I played rugby in college. Then I did a bunch of like Ironman triathlons where you basically like you're torturing yourself. You're torturing these sports, you're torturing yourself, but there's something that, that goes off in your brain where you get like some pleasure <laughs> through the pain, some pleasure through stress, pleasure through like high pressure um, in the moment uh, situations. That's why I freaking love live painting because it's, it's like a, it's like a sport to me. I'm not even that much. I'm like an artsy fartsy kind of guy, really. I don't even think of it as an art. I'm obsessed with the skills, developing the skills because there is, it's never ending developing painting skills. There's just always new things I'm trying to do. I'm always seeing what other artists are capable of. And I want to do that. I want to do that. And I just got to, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. I'll have a lifetime worth of exciting challenges to pursue as an artist and um well i don't know where i'm even going with this i'm just I'm, you get me talking about this stuff and i just can just freaking go on but that's why i love it you know it it, it brings out the best in me you know like i hinted at earlier uh i'm not exactly the most you know sun, it's, it's not all sunshine and rainbows in, in matt's life uh it, it's a human thing we all experience our ups and downs, but art brings out the best in me, you know? So if you, if you look on my, uh, like, so I look back on my like social media pictures, people always take pictures of me while I'm painting. And I always have a, have a great smile on my face or, or I'm like super dialed in and focused. Like I'm like at my best. So, you know, you find an activity that does that for you, you get hooked on it and you want to make it your life. And so that's what I've been doing ever since. Um, I got big goals for myself. I really want to, want to take live painting like to the very, very tippy top, you know, because I know some guys who are doing, I know some guys that are older than me. I've been doing it a while 
And uh, they, they've been to some really cool places to paint, you know, some big concert venues to paint some really cool bands, like professional sports events are on the side of the field doing paintings. And like, that's going to be me pretty soon. So you guys stay tuned. I'm going to cut this video off at about 10 minutes here. Let me know what you think of this. Uh, the lesson that I definitely want to leave you with, though, before I cut this off, even if you're not an artist, it's not. this is not even about painting or art or anything, but I bet that you can look back on your life and there's like some activity, whether it's like yoga, gardening, writing, running, walking in the woods. Like there's some, there's, there are things out there that do the same thing to your brain that painting does to mine. And a lot of these things are affordable and accessible, if not free and easy to do every day. So the empowering message is that you have a lot of control over your brain. You can shift what's happening in there to kind of make it work better, to get it more focused and high performing, but also to improve your psychological experience of being a human because it's not all sunshine and rainbows, but you can take control and try to improve uh, your attitude and your mood and just the, 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 the experience of what it's like to be a human can be a lot better if you uh, take the responsibility and do those things that you know make you feel better. So that's all I got for you today. Check out my website, matthewmillerart.com. So these paintings are available there. If you're looking in the back, oh man, I like that one back there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they're available. So hit me up. Let me know what you think of this. Uh, what else would you like to know about me? Because I'm going to do some more videos. I'm starting a YouTube channel. Yeah, I got roped into doing that, didn't I? So here we go. You guys have an awesome rest of your day or night.